Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Cohort 1 Orientation. Congratulations on completing your first step in the process, attending this orientation. By the end of this session, our hope is that you will, able, you will be able to easily navigate the portal and complete your 2021 professional development registry requirements. Now, I will turn it over to Ashley. Good evening, everyone. As Laura said, I'm Ashley Casey with the Children's Forum, and this evening I'm going to talk about your registry coach, data requirements and deadlines, and some helpful tips to make this as easy as possible. Please remember to enter your questions in the chat box, and I will answer them at the end of each requirement step. Now let's get started. We're going to go over a lot of information today. Do not worry if you miss something. A training webinar will be posted in the portal. By now, you all should have received an email from your Miami registry coach. All participating centers have been assigned to one of the following coaches, Kim Yara Gardner, Evelyn Thomas, or Savannah Ryan. If you have not received an email from one of the following coach or from one of the coaches, please reach out to our office as soon as possible. Each week, your coach will send an email outlining the requirements and deadlines for your next step. Please do not hesitate to call our office or email your coach. That's what they are here for, to help and guide you through this process. Before I go over the deadlines and requirements, please be aware this orientation has been divided into four cohorts. Each cohort has a different set of deadlines. Tonight's training is for cohort one. Now let's get started. Step one, due October 9th. Directors will create a business account and complete the program demographic survey. Step two, due by October 16th, all required staff must create a personal account and submit DCF transcript for verification. Step three, due by October 23rd, directors will complete their roster and all required staff will confirm employment. Step four, due by October 30th, required staff will upload any other required education that they hold. Now I said required staff several times. Required staff are those working directly with children or providing educational support or supervision to those working directly with children, including but not limited to owners, directors, center administrators, teaching staff, paraprofessionals, curriculum specialists, and other non-teaching support staff. Secretarial, transportation, and food preparation staff are not required to submit data. Step one, how to create your business account and complete the demographic survey due by October 9th. Before, before I discuss each step, I'm first going to give you a list of information you need to gather before you begin. Gathering the information needed is key to making this process as easy as possible. To complete step one, you will need to gather the following documents. Yes, hold on one second. Can everybody hear me? Okay. okay, so to complete step one, you will need to gather the following documents. Your business license, the owner's contact information listed on the business license, your DCF issued license, and the director of records contact information listed on the DCF license, a PDF, co a PDF copy of the director of records driver's license, and most recent pay stub. If, if you do not have a pay stub, please contact your registry coach for an income worksheet. Again, do not worry, this list will be available in the portal and has been emailed to you by your registry coach. To create a business account, you will visit the website listed here and click Create Business Account to begin. This is what you'll see when you click on Create Business Account. On page one, you will enter your program information and click next. Enter the owner's contact information on page two and click next. 
On page three, you will enter the director's information and upload required documents. We highly recommend entering a facility email address on this page instead of the director's email address to ensure you can access your account if the director leaves. Contact your registry coach if your license number or director of record changes. Please make sure your documents are clear and legible to ensure your request does not get rejected. Also, please be aware that you must use the calendar button to enter dates throughout the portal. On page four, you will confirm your information is entered correctly and click Submit Request. If your submission fails for any reason, you will receive a message like this one, and you will click on Create Business Account to repeat the process providing complete and accurate information. This is what you'll see when your submission has been completed. Please take note of your request ID. This could be helpful in finding your request should you have any questions. After your request has been submitted, you will receive a series of emails. The first email of three is the business account request received shown here. It typically takes two to five business days for your request to be processed. The decision email is the second email you will receive. Here is an example of an, <clears throat> here is an, example of an email for an account that has been rejected. In this case, you will need to complete the entire business account process again. The reason your request was rejected is listed in the email. Note the reason so the same mistake is not made twice. Contact your registry coach if you have any questions. Hopefully you all received this email, the request of re approval decision email shown here. After you receive the approval email, the director email address will receive the third and final email with instructions to create a password. A link to create your password is provided in the email. This link can only be used once and it's only good for three days. The link's expiration date is also listed in the email. Click the link to create a business account password. You will then be taken to the portal and prompted to create a password for your business account. Enter your password with the minimum requirements and click Reset Password to continue. After you have created your password, click Login to Business Account, and then you will enter your DCF license number as your username and newly created password. Then click Login to Continue. Now you're on the home page with access to information on various programs offered at the Children's Forum. Use the left toolbar to navigate the portal, and for information and videos on how to use our website, click Portal Help for additional information. Click Demographics to complete the Program Demographics Survey. Before you start on the demographic survey, you will need to gather the following information. The number of lead teachers, assistant teachers, number of directors, assistant directors, and administration, the number of paraprofessionals, substitutes, floaters, and your enrollment numbers. The program demographic survey asks you to enter the number of vacant and filled positions. We know how challenging things have been since COVID-19 and things are changing every day. Centers have had to downsize and some have even closed their doors. We are here to help in any way we can. Please let us know if there's anything we can do to help. Typically, you would count all the positions, including vacant positions, as long as you plan to keep, <clears throat> as long as you plan to keep those positions at your program. Given the unique circumstances of COVID for this year, only count the vacant positions if you plan on hiring them within the next 30 days. This would also apply to furloughed or laid off positions. List them if you plan on filling them or reinstating within the next 30 days. If circumstances change, this information can always be updated after it is submitted. You are required to complete or reconfirm your site's demographic information annually to maintain account access. However, it is important to keep this information up to date. This information helps determine if you have met your registry data requirements. 
The number of positions entered in the first three questions shown here are the numbers that will be listed on the estimated goal column on the Miami QIS report, which I will discuss a little bit later. On the survey, you can only count each employee once. So if you have employees that work in multiple positions throughout the day, you will count the employee in the position they spend most of their day. If their day is split 50-50 between two positions, you will count the employee in the higher level position. For example, if you have an employee that works 30 hours as an assistant teacher and 10 hours as a lead teacher, this employee would be counted as an assistant teacher since they work more hours in that position daily. If you have an employee that works 20 hours as a lead teacher and 20 hours as an assistant teacher, this employee would be counted as a lead teacher since it is the higher level position. Again, employees can only be counted once on the survey. However, you will enter both you will add both positions to the employee information on the roster, which I will discuss a little bit later. Also, this survey is unavailable for 24 hours after it is submitted. So if you make a mistake or something changes, you will need to wait a day before you can change the numbers. But please do go back and make the adjustments as this information is used to determine if education and other data have been submitted for all required positions at your program. Click, click next to answer the following questions on the remaining pages. And on page five, you will confirm all the questions, you have answered all the questions correctly and click save and close. This completes step one. Step two, creating a personal account and completing the, pro, or the DCF transcript verification process due by October 16th. To create a personal account, visit the webpage listed here, the same page you created your business account. Click Create Personal Account to continue. Be aware that directors must create a business account and a personal account. All other required staff will only need a personal account. After you click on Create Personal Account, you'll be brought to page one where you will enter your legal first and last name and date of birth. As mentioned before, please be aware that you must use the calendar button to enter dates throughout the portal. Click next to continue. Complete the personal demographics on page two and click next. Lastly, on page three, you will enter your contact information, agree to the terms and click create account. Now your account has been created and a link has been sent to the email address provided. Check your email and click the link. Remember this link can only be used once and is only good for three days. You will now be prompted to create a password for your personal account. Enter your new password and click reset password. You will then click login to personal account and enter your email address as your username and newly created password and then click login to continue. Please be aware that your personal account username is an email address and your business account username is your DCF license number. Now you're logged into your personal account. Before I show you how to submit your DCF transcript for verification, I would like to take a second to show you around the portal. Use the left toolbar to update demographics and contact information, confirm employment on the My Employment tab, submit DCF transcript and all other required education on the My Education tab. Additional how-to videos can be found in Portal Help on the bottom. You and your staff are required to submit DCF transcripts for verification. This will be done on the overview tab in My Education. First, you will download, print, and complete the cover sheet. Then you will scan and save the completed cover sheet and your DCF transcript as one PDF document. Then using the red browse button, locate the file on your computer and upload for verification. This process links your account to our database and must be done through the portal.
you will now receive an email indicating whether your submission was rejected or accepted. DCF transcripts must be accepted and verified before you can confirm employment. And that completes step two. Do we have any questions? No? All right. Well, we'll move on to step three. Step three, completing your roster and, and employment confirmation due by October 23rd. In this section, I will jump around a little between your personal account and your business account. To complete the roster, you will log into your business account and you and your staff will confirm employment in your personal account. Before getting started on the roster, gather the following information. Your employee's email address used to create their personal portal account, first and last name, birth date, hire date, hourly rate of pay, pay stub, number of hours worked per week, position title, and age groups that they teach. As previously mentioned, to complete the roster, you will log into your business account and you will click roster on the left hand side. The roster has two tables. The table on the top will be displayed. Displayed here are new employees that you have added. They will need to complete the required steps to be displayed on the bottom current roster. The table on the bottom will display individuals who are currently linked to your center in our database. This list will need to be updated to reflect current staff. If, a, if the pencil icon is circled in red, this means action needs to be taken. You will click the minus icon to remove employees. If you see a red flag on the right hand side, this also means that action needs to be taken. All required staff must create a personal account Upload a DCF transcript printed within the last three months with cover sheet for verification and confirm employment for them to show up on your current roster. To add new employees, at the bottom of the page, you will click add new person. Here's where you will enter new the new employee's name, birth date, and most importantly, the email address used to create their personal portal account. You will also enter the hourly rate of pay, upload a pay stub, and enter position information. On the bottom of the page, you will enter multiple positions for employees as mentioned earlier. Each staff member must have at least one active position, but no more than two active positions. Please enter an end date for all positions that no longer apply before adding a new position. Click send request to initiate a new employee email notification. Employees will receive an email like the one show here, shown here, prompting them to confirm their employment. If they have not already created a personal portal account, they will need to create one at this time. After a new employee has been added, they will be displayed on the top table until they have created their personal account, submitted their DCF transcript with cover sheet, and confirmed their employment. Once all these steps have been completed, they will be moved from the top table to the bottom current roster. If a mistake is made when entering their information in the roster, it cannot be removed. You must re-add the employee with the correct information and the incorrect information will remain here at the top. Please disregard it. To update staff information, you will click on the pencil icon. Previously entered data is saved and you will only need to update if there are any changes and submit a pay stub annually. At the bottom of the page, you will click edit employment. To remove employees, click the minus icon and enter, and enter employment end date and the reason for leaving. 
to confirm your you and your staffs to confirm employment you and your staff will log into your personal portal accounts once you have logged in you will click my employment on the left hand side and then click the next the yes no button to continue Once all these questions have been answered, click Save to confirm employment. Your employment is now confirmed. After new employees confirm their employment, it will be displayed in their employment history shown here. And also, they will be now be displayed on your current roster found in your business account on the roster page. So I would like to take a minute to recap the roster because it is a lot. Once all the steps have been completed, your roster should look similar to this one. So email addresses will, will replace the red flags after your employees complete the required steps. Any added employees that have not completed the required steps will remain on the top. If you see red flags or red circles, please have your employee complete the required steps. If you have any questions, please contact your registry coach for help. Now this completes step three. Moving along to our to step four and the final step. Step four, submitting your education documents to your personal account and the Miami QIS education report in your business account due by October 30th. All required staff must submit the following education documents a DCF transcript, all other ECE credentials held that are not reflected on the DCF transcript, a college or university transcript, and a college transcript, and a high school diploma if a college transcript has not been submitted with at least nine college credits. Please be aware that all foreign degrees and transcripts must be evaluated by an accredited agency. If you have any questions, please contact your registry coach. All education documents will be submitted through your personal account on the My Education tab. After your documents have been verified, they will be displayed on the top of the page. Documents awaiting verification will be listed at the bottom shown here. Please do not resubmit documents unless they have been rejected. So if you hold a degree, you will now click on degrees and then enter degree details to continue. Enter degree details and upload an unofficial college transcript college or university transcript from a regionally accredited institution for the highest degree held in early childhood or related field and the highest degree held outside the field. If you hold an ECE credential that was not listed on your D that was not reflected on your DCF transcript, you will click credentials on the left hand side to to submit your credential. Complete credential details and provide documents for ECE credentials only, please. If you do not have a college degree but have taken credit bearing courses at a regionally accredited college or university, you will click on the credit classes tab and then click enter group classes, enter a group of classes button to submit your college transcript. Please ignore the single credit class button. It is not relevant to the Miami QIS program. Once you click on that button, you will enter your information and upload your transcript. If you have not submitted a college transcript showing a degree or at least nine credit courses, you will then need to submit your high school diploma by clicking on the high school diploma tab. Enter your high school information, upload your diploma, and save your information. 
And now we've made it to the final step, the Miami QIS report. Remember in the beginning when I said, in the very beginning when I said the first three questions on the demographic survey would help determine if your program completed all the requirements? Well, this is the report I was talking about. Log into your business account and click Miami QIS to view the Miami QIS data submission status report. This report shows your program's annual Thrive by Five submission status for each requirement. This report is in, intended to track the goals, achievements, and education documents submitted by you and your staff. Before you look at this report, or even peek at it, the roster and all personal account data must be completed. The demographic survey, roster, and personal account data must be submitted for this report to work properly. If the numbers do not match your records, please review the number of positions entered. <clears throat> Excuse me. If the numbers do not match your records, please review the number of positions entered on the demographic survey and employee information entered on the roster. On the bottom of the report, you will see staff details. Here it will give you a breakdown on the education documents that we have for each of your employees. If there is education missing from this report, please submit the documents on the My Education tab in your personal account. This section, the Portal Help section, will be your best friend. Under the Portal Help tab, you will find tutorials, documents, and helpful tips that will help guide you through this process. The Documents and Details tab will contain information about your upcoming deadlines as well as information that has been emailed to you. You may also refer to this page if you have questions regarding the type of education documents that we are collecting. And as promised, some helpful tips. Gather all your documents before you begin each step. Enter your facility email address instead of the director email address when creating a business account. Your DCF license number is your business account username. Your email address is your personal account username. DCF transcript and cover sheet must be submitted as one PDF document. All documents submitted via the portal must be submitted in PDF format and can be no larger than five megabytes. Contact your registry coach if your license number or director of record changes. And that completes step four. Okay, well, thank you all for attending. If you have any questions, please contact your Miami registry coach. <laughs>